legs and face so bad. I haven't haven't had actual
Sex since April 6, 2008, and the sex, it's so called, and the so called. Sex I had with my abusive ex between March 2001 and April 2008 was meteor confess and absolute creating lonely and horrible. I haven't had actual sex since April 6, 2008. And the so called sex I had with my abusive ex between March 2001 and April 2008 was mediocre at best and absolutely degrading, lonely, and horrible. I can't remember the Matchbox 20 song. Remember, I didn't know Rob Thomas was Matchbox 20. I can't remember the Matchbox 20 song I was listening to uh, that I loved in, um, when I was in my 20s. Three Doors Down, I remember some. I remember the kryptonite and Love Me When I'm Gone.
proceeding to work out three times a week for three to four hours at a time so I could turn my body into something incredible and then be hated. <laughs> Hated until I found my thing with my Earthcam TV Alicia's World. Got a taste of what I'd always wanted. And then it amounted to me spending nearly eight years trapped in a progressively worse abusive relationship. How did I not completely be destroyed by that? Got a bulging disc injury and met a guy via Yahoo Answers who believed in me. I wound up trusting enough to share my old website with and he was floored. He even thought I could be famous despite the fact that I was 40 fucking years old. But of course, not long after that, Donald nearly killed me. simple enough. I got received out of the blue what I thought was proof that the lead singer of what had been my favorite band for years had known me via my Alicia's World channel and had been had fallen for me via my Alicia's World channel and had been keeping tabs on me all those years that I was with Donald. I.e., I became deeply immersed in an absolutely powerful, astounding delusion. But that delusion kept me from slipping into just total nothingness, despair. My mom had had her first breakdown in over 10 years in March, just a measly four months after Donald had done the unthinkable to me on 11408. So Charlie awakened my fire caused me to believe in myself again to start writing more s writing again I had written in years writing songs again 
I was writing songs while working for a friggin' parking concept Samco as a friggin' parking attendant. Writing songs like Anchor and riding that saddest roller coasters and you have to give me more to hold on to. All of them I wrote in between taking people's money, taking you know, cars, whatever. Charlie believed in me. And I showed him what I looked like. Now he still is like he's like he believed I could become famous. He didn't care how old I was, he's like you're forty and a twenty five year olds don't look as good as you. I have a whole stack this high of all the nice things he wrote to me. He would go to my website and listen to my songs, listen to my poems. Very impressed. Told me Don was the luckiest guy on the planet. Uh huh. At that point, Donald wasn't even deigning to get me off of his tongue as fast as be po humanly possible. After putting mouthwash in his mouth. At that point, he was just crawling on top of me and pounding away when he was shit-faced. Expecting me to be excited by, os by osmosis and remain excited despite the fact that it took him forever to finally ejaculate on my stomach. Juxtapose that with Donald's the luckiest man on the planet. Yeah.
I was looking for something the other day in that room. Well, not the other day before I broke my foot. Um, I stumbled across a framed picture of me and Donald at our heaviest. He went got all the way up to like 284 when I met him. He was like 1, 210 I'd say. So he put on as much weight as I did. So I was 160 and got up to 232. He could keep me believing I couldn't do any better. And well, I know now, even at 232 pounds, there were men that did way better than Donald that would have wanted me. Charlie was impressed with even my 232 pound self. I'm well proportioned and even though I was a lot heavier I still had the you know the legs and the tight and the, the bigger hourglass stomach, so I get a bigger stomach, obviously, when I'm a lot heavier. But my legs stay lean. That's because they've been it's years and years and years and years and years of walking everywhere. That's all those years I worked out at the gym.
almost two weeks. I'm praying that it's healing correctly. I'm praying that it's healed enough that I wouldn't it be great if I could go in that boot and actually walk on the boot. People that go through a lot worse, of course, but a lot of those people are not alone. My mom was dying of pancreatic cancer, but she was surrounded by tons of friends and family who adored her, who loved her. You know what I mean? I've been completely rejected and abandoned just by people around here I thought cared about me. It's mind-blowing to me. I'm going to add her to the list. I'm not going to keep bothering somebody. Like my YouTube friend Karen said, if someone ignores you, usually they're dead. I called, I left two messages for that woman. simple. I just wanted her to get my mail from me. I'm taking probiotics and krill oil. Krill oil in lieu of fish oil is just better than fish oil. It has that astaxanthin in it too. Huh. When my mom was here with me, she was taking probiotics with because of me. I'd have her taken the fish oil, krill oil too. certain things I've studied and those like people met Women's World magazine, all the ads that fish oil, probiotics are like the top things everyone should be taking. And um my mom was still she could she'd be taking that stuff. She won't know to take any of it on her own though. Again, I'm not saying she should be taking everything under the sun. There are certain things. Probiotics, the Women's Royal Magazine, they have done study after study after study. You take antibiotics, you have to take probiotics. Antibiotics kill off all your good gut bacteria. And my mom's been on repeated courses of antibiotics. away from me by a duplicity. Lord only knows how much longer she has left on this planet. <laughs>